Hello and welcome to the Comedy Button. My name's Anthony Gallegos. Joining me this week, as always, is Brian Altano. Brat, brat. Scott Bromley. Hey, catchphrase. Ryan Scott. Laptop not broken at all. And Max Scoville. Come skunk, loose on the beach, jerking off on everybody's towels. Watch out, here comes the come skunk. In a basket full of milk snakes. <laughs> Why would he do any what? of those things? <laughs> the cum skunk is, is this, unstoppable. We're like, are we like the European comedy button this week? <laughs> just, Brian what? is like growing out. Brian's like has to like really like he's hit that age where he's having to tap really deep to get into that weird, insane part of his brain. And Max is hitting just the beginning of that age. Where he can just put words together in phrases that half make sense. Really? So you kind yeah. of follow no, I think it's just, this is a byproduct of working at home and just, I just make up fun animal stories in my head. Now he's on, he's on like, I work at home and I never do that. I'm basically dead already. He's on like day five of having watched The Ring on VHS, <laughs> where his face is melty and weird. I just do, I just do like magnetic poetry in my brain with words that I think are vaguely, like it occurred to me. The, a milk snake is an animal. <laughs> Somebody was like, that "Man, to you. as <laughs> opposed fucking... to as opposed to a cum skunk." Yeah, well, the cum, cum skunk isn't real. That's one that I made up. That's a Max Scoville <laughs> oh. original. I'm the inventor Wait, of the but, cum skunk. A milk snake is a real thing. Wait, hold on. Yes, do cum do skunks cum? Yeah, probably. I almost said do I, cum they're... skunk. I guess yes. Sometimes <laughs> they're mammals. Cum they're skunks mammals. are known because they when they when they do their their spraying, it's actually because they have to jerk off to spray their stink everywhere. <laughs> their, their stinky smell. <laughs> Uh, is that okay. why he hangs out on the beach because there's more spank material? So I, I just want to say if you um, if you heard about the show from listening to NPR, over the weekend, <laughs> welcome to the party. Welcome to the comedy button. Oh Jesus! <laughs> there's a reason where they when they started talking on. So we were on uh, NPR Sunday Morning Edition and they uh, they did a segment on on how podcasts make money now, and they started the show. Scott and I were dying over this. They started the show just classic NPR. So I have I have always rallied against. NPR. I've, I've done it on this show. I did it on the debriefings. I always said, like, I fucking hate NPR because it's always like, uh, coming up next on NPR, uh, an hour and a half about uh, mummy paper. Yeah. And, <laughs> and how there's a shortage of it in Uganda. <laughs> and fucking our segment on podcast, and we're like this high energy fucking terrible podcast. The, they <laughs> kick off this story about us being successful with uh, the knitting podcast is very successful. And it's just this woman going, yeah, if you guys want to make some crafts, uh, we've got all sorts of ideas coming up on uh, the Knitcast. I, know, I think that's amazing, by the way, that there was... That a that they they totally just they walk into that c- giant wet cobweb of stereotypes every single day when they get to the work in the morning at NPR. They're like they're like oh well today we found a kitten that not only cleans herself but she also cleans her friends. <laughs> And then it's, there's just like this U- Ugandan drum. Um, and I think it's amazing. It's it's and it's really cool that that I, I mean I, you know I'm very honored that we got to be on that show. But I think it's it is really funny that they started with this knitting podcast and then there's this hard left where you hear Max go, we have a we're going tunnel. in a time tunnel, and then all of us <laughs> laughing, and then me talking about how this this show is basically to make the show it's just it's just pizza in a cab. Ride. We make a hundred thousand dollars a year and we spend it on pizza and taxi. <laughs> Cab automobile rides. Which, yeah, I know. If you actually boil it down, it sounds completely ridiculous. It's 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 basically the scene in Home Alone Two: Lost in New York, where Kevin's in the back of the limo and he's eating this hot eating pizza. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like the announcer's really... like, they make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and he's like, bah, 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 fuck this, I don't give a shit about you guys. It's, I mean, it's it's okay. So obviously that's a little reductive way to look at all of this. But yeah, the the NPR thing was very fascinating to me. I think it was uh, we did. 45 minutes 45 minutes 45 minute interview and they boiled it down to to, four seconds to to, i think our entire segment was probably 20 seconds long yeah maybe 30 seconds long. wow which is still like i mean some people were mad about that you know i don't blame you because we've been hyping it for a long time (laughs) uh but but we had no idea how yeah, it was gonna no, turn we out. had of no course. idea. Well, the thing was, and Brian and I had talked about this multiple times because we were both involved in the interview. Um, <clears throat> it could have gone a million different ways with the questions he was asking us. Yeah, and it was it was we could also kind of tell that the the piece itself was going to be ex- like not even understanding what we do because the interviewer 
did not understand what we did at all. There was there was a couple very very candid, very real moments of of actualization during the interview, where the interviewer was like, "So wait a minute, let me get this right. You guys, you basically just hang out and make fart sounds and and do dumb noises and talk about animals and stuff like that." And then all good. and then all these people listen to you and give you money, and we're like, "We." Yeah, that's that's the thing. And he was like, "We have to send people tote bags. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do journalism." And we're like, "No, we we don't." <laughs> and he all was we just, do is consider things and then talk about a lake. <laughs> <laughs> There's less water in it this this month. Yeah. Um, oh man. So there there and he was just sort of like, "Well, I, like I don't get it." And I'm like, "Well, it's sort of like when you're in an art gallery, right? And they, like there's always the guy who's standing there who's just like, "My dumb kid could have made this." Like. I, I went to art school in New York City. Like modern, you go to modern art galleries. There's like a bag of. I went to one art gallery once. There was a bag of candy wrappers in the corner. Next to it was a pile of candy, and you would eat a candy, and the, all the candy wrappers were sh- were fucking red, white, and blue. And you would take it, you'd eat the candy, you take the candy wrapper, and you'd throw it in the corner, and you'd be like, garbage. And it'd be like, America's garbage. Get it? Punch in the dick. Cry. And it was so dumb. And a lot of people would walk by, and they'd be like, my fucking dumb kid could have made this. And with this show, it's like, yeah, he could have, but he fucking didn't that's that, that is the second <laughs> half to that comment yes all times, yeah. but he didn't yeah. like and that, we yeah, did and exa- that's not to like you know there's a lot of dumb shows out there but i think that like what what we did was we made something that uh people can kind of listen to every week and they they grow with us and we've changed a lot over the years and i hope that we've i mean i got hit up by somebody the other day saying i've been listening to your show since i was 16 and i'm 22 and i'm like fuck we've been doing this for, show or oh a show God. like this for for the length of that guy being like got my first boner to like i might get married this year if i'm dumb like that's yeah. crazy <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a long time that's a long but time yeah, to I mean, somebody I, I mean yeah it's caught up with me too it's like the same thing i've talked about here is that sometimes i just feel the extra pressure you know it's like you always hear about someone when they're like oh you've become a role model and stuff so you have to consider what you say more yeah i was really opposed to that for a long time when we did the show like i would even hear you guys sometimes be like oh we gotta watch what we say i'd be like fuck that we're just doing the show but i i've come around on that a lot just yeah People, obviously, it does have an... Like, I just got... Mm-hmm. A, I, I'm not going to read it, but I just got an email from some kid who wrote, like, 600 words about how he moved for a long-distance relationship and now is stuck with this girl and he has no money to get back. And he's like, what do I do? Eat I'm, all, I'm Eat hopeless. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know... Sell people write with on the internet. Don't do, do but that. But we do um. this dumb thing about milk snakes <laughs> and stuff like that, and people still write to us with, like, these heartfelt things because yeah. in some ways, I think... Maybe these people don't have... Well, if he listened to the show uh, as as long as he did, he would have heard us fucking say a million times, don't do that! Yeah. True. Don't but, fucking do but, that! But, but I think that, no, Anthony's not... He's 20 there's, and there's, his brain's not finished. There's you know, more, and he's going to make more, dumb choices. There's, there's layers to this show, and I think that's why people appreciate it. And I think that's, like, why... And, and you totally nailed it, Anthony. Like, we do cum snake jokes, and then people write in with relationship advice. Like, I can't imagine... Cum uh, snake is a Perfectly one. reasonable there's for one to follow the other there. Sure. But I can't imagine in the 80s being like, oh, man, that was great. Gallagher, you got a lot of watermelon all over the front of my wife's tits. I'm thinking of leaving her. What should I do? And him being like, I don't know. Is she black? <laughs> that's like we don't cross that that's bridge more, because that's more of a Gallagher two joke. But yes, I, it's I, and, it's, and it's and it's because I think that we do have the joke moments like that. But our show, as that NPR guy will never understand because he doesn't listen regularly, no. broaches that, and then it also broaches us all helping you through a really powerful breakup or yep. stuff like that. And so the best the best way I ever heard it described was um, somebody on a forum said this. I think was it's like the Breakfast Club spread out over five years, <laughs> <laughs> and that's really like that's kind of what if they made like an all dude like an all white dude. Well, they're all white. Yeah, it's an all an all dude Breakfast Club. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a, a bunch of a bunch of dudes just kind of yeah. Kind of you didn't you didn't see the black guy in the movie because he was fucking expelled <laughs> for the same shit those white that, people did. Come on, come on. There was no black people in Shermer, Illinois. You don't think so? No. Which, which one? Which one of you guys is Judd Nelson? Me. Okay. I don't know about that. I'm definitely more of a Judd Nelson. No, Max didn't have a dad. <laughs> That's true. I spent more time in detention though. Huh. But you yeah. didn't have a dad. I'll be Emilio. I, I think I'm going to give you this one on the strength of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, going back to the, the the podcast kind of time frame thing, 
It's fucking. It's, this has been something that's really been fucking me with me lately. But the fact that the like four years that I've been doing public internet video game shit. It doesn't seem like a lot of time to me because I've been getting older and there's that weird kind of quantum time frame passage of Rip Van Winkle shit. Yeah. But having people be like, yeah, man, I started following your stuff when I was 15 and now I'm 19. Like, that's a huge fucking leap. Yeah. That is a massive leap. But it's, I mean, I understand what you because it's also, it's only four Call of Duties. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it seems like so many is it, Yeah, it feels like more. That's how, that's yeah. how people are going to start measuring their ages. Well, sometimes a- double XP weekend lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs> I do get a little uncomfortable that people listen that are really young, though. Sometimes. You get uncomfortable about a lot of things. I, I, so pe- I, I used to get upset about that, but I honestly, like, I I spent my childhood sneaking downstairs to watch yeah. weird avant-garde comedy on TV, to watch crazy public access shit. I used shit. to watch Oz as a child, because I wow. thought I found yeah. that show fascinating. Like, I distinctly mean, no. remember listening to uh, Loveline at some young and impressionable age, oh, which course, is why yeah. I remember this joke, but somebody asking, how do I have anal sex for the first time, and Adam Carolla being like... Uh, you know, just get a couple wine coolers and jam them in there. (laughs) I might not even be remembering it right, but that stuck with me. And I was like, first of all, like, what the fuck is a wine cooler? Love Lines (laughs) fucked me up, too, because I remember I went from being like I saw my first vagina on TV to uh, somebody to me turning on Love Lines and somebody being like. Because you know what it's like when you're that age, you just you flip through the channels to find anything sort of vaguely sexual. Like you're right. like, oh, this is a this is a workout video. Oh, this is a scrambled porn. Oh, this is this is a sex advice show, and they might have a porn star on. Simply it. Italian. Like, so this guy wrote in, and he's like, hey, so uh, I I was really drunk and I was having sex with my girlfriend, and I I fucking threw up on her, and now I can't come unless I do that. And I went from being like. Oh, that's what a vagina looks like, too. There's people who can't come unless they're throwing up on tits. <laughs> oh. So that's I, like, it's, if someone listens to this show and they're 13, in this world now, where you have infinite access to just the worst shit... And back like the, to compete gonna, with the internet back then, like na- back then we had Rotten dot com, which is a website you'd go to in right. a library, and oh, be a, yeah. there'd be a picture of a dick on a bird, and you'd put it on the on the <laughs> on the computer, and then you'd leave, and somebody else would walk <laughs> in and be like, "Oh, shell shock." The I mean, <laughs> you bring up an interesting point about gross things on the internet. I was talking with Max about this earlier, and and sex. Uh, there was an article today. Oh yeah. Oh, this is so, it's like <laughs> this is you what went it, full Beavis on that. Max. <laughs> 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 There are, oh my god there are very few things that i can see and just like feel physically nauseous seeing yeah. so there was an article on gawker this kid on 4chan uh posted um about he has he's he's a brony and he has a, mm-hmm. a rainbow dash figurine that he has in a mason jar now in this mason jar oh no he has had the goal to drown it in its own cum, in his own cum. So he has been saving his cum in a mason jar with a Rainbow Dash figurine. However, because it's been getting cold and he's been uh, placing this uh, this jar of cum with the My Little Pony toy in it on his radiator, he turned it on and didn't think about it, and the toy melted in a boiling jar of semen. And he showed a photo of it, and it is the grossest fucking thing I have ever seen, and I almost vomited just looking it looks at like, that photo. It looks like hot glue. It, it looks like melted hot glue and, and a little bit of like yeah. light diarrhea. Just sure. Just, and sure. then right next to it, he's like, "But I started again." Yeah, that's, and he has, oh, that's what God. I, it's like, it's like to give you to give you a sense that like maybe like. For a second, I think I, think I saw Just that. Just you that there's always so much shittier than you out there. I, 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 feel, I, I feel fucking nauseous I, right now. So I read that this. This showed up on my on my Tumblr timeline. This was on Gawker? Yeah, this was on Gawker. Why would I think they I, do that? Well, because something happens on Fortune, then it goes to Reddit, then it goes to Gawker. Okay. See, this yeah. is like well, this is why I like where I work because when we have a slow news day, I eat a black cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are like, "Hey, there, here's a cum rainbow horse." Um, when he wasn't deterred by it, though, because right next to it in the background <laughs> was a very tiny rainbow dash uh, figurine in a in a regular uh, highball glass. <laughs> You know what I love about I this? Love this guy, cum. this guy, no. he basically he made a sound garden video. <laughs> <laughs> or that's like that's like every '80s metal video. It's like, baby, nah, 
up and it's just like Kong going all over this fucking rainbow horse <laughs> and then it melts and explodes that is like that is the ultimate that's that is a fucking acdc video so scott you, you were talking about this to me and you were like first of all i just love that like i come over and like you open the door and we usually start quoting dracula about that point and then yeah. i come in here and we kind of like what's new with you oh, i've got some new records i almost threw up today on the internet and I'm like oh what happened this guy beat off on a plastic horse you know like, that was that was like our basic like that's our catching up small talk Did you see the game on thursday Did you see that guy who beat off on a pony like <laughs> scott fucking- what what was did he did he explain what he he eventually intended to do once he had filled oh, the no, jar. His goal, his goal was to drown Rainbow Dash sure. in his own cum. So See, and you, you, you were and like, then was you he were just like, going to be like, oh, cool. You were like, what? this degenerate, this, this, this man, this broken human being, you know? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like teenagers do some pretty gross shit. Like, I, I feel they like, do, I feel like there's, so I remember distinctly, I remember drawing a, a bullseye on a piece of office paper and trying to jerk off on that. <laughs> And then being like, well, there's that. And I just, you know, threw you, it away. Did you hit it? I, like, oh, yeah. no, hold on. That's fucking bullshit because you could draw the bullseye th- as any size you want. No, that's, not, just... that's not a legal bullseye. You could no, draw it's this... not a legal bullseye. It was like a vague idea of like how accurate can it be? You aim for the center of the bullseye. It's not fucking darts where I'm trying to get a score. But it was like that target practice scene in The Fifth Element where he's like, you can, can shoot nets at it. You can I, fire fucking ice beams. It's just like, just a bunch I could, of... I could totally see you scoring yourself after that, Max. Ma- Max is totally right. <laughs> Teens do a lot of weird things. No doubt about it. Everyone has whatever things in their mind that they look back and they're like, God, why the fuck did I do that? But I do feel like in the internet day and age, it's made it this weird thing where people like... Like, instead of it being that thing that you did and you look back and being like, man, I was super weird, the internet allows people to fetishize it and develop it yes. more than yep. maybe yes. they should. Yep. And a couple years ago, I was I was like, you know what? It's We live in this amazing time where everyone is a photographer. And now I'm like, oh, shit. Everyone is a photographer. A photographer. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's a fucking problem that people are like... Uh, Because back in the day, if you came all over a fake horse, and bear in mind, we had My Little Ponies growing up. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that. We had My Little Ponies in the 80s, so whatever you're jerking off to, it's basically vintage porn, you idiots. You horse loving turds. I don't remember bronies when I was a kid, but keep going. (laughs) You horse loving (laughs) turds. What a bully older brother thing this You horse loving turds. What's going think, on in here, you horse loving turds? But I do think that when I hear about things like I'm this. Wyatt. Right, <laughs> I do think though that you know, like I, I think that You'd be like, you know, we do live in an amazing age, Brian, where people can do all these incredible things. I do think though, more than ever, like I I almost feel like, you know, like we got by in a way where we're like, ah, oh, my parents didn't really watch over my shoulder too close and we were fine. But I feel like nowadays parents have to like at least be more aware of what their kids are doing. Like because No. No, they you don't. You don't think so, Max? No, I I I mean I I don't know how it's possible because I I don't know how many family gatherings I've been to where it's like, "Oh, look, the 2-year-old's using an iPad." And it's just like, "Well, that's terrifying. That's utterly actually fucking legitimately harrowing." That that's a thing. And it's like, uh, you can spell something wrong and it comes up with something terrible. I remember, yeah. I remember what, like ducking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you can just, at this point, you can just go to Google and just start typing in like, should I, and then it po- just populates your autocomplete yeah. with horrible possibilities. But no, because there, there's a lot of times where Google's like, yo, I'm out. And it happens very quickly. If you go into Google and you type, yeah, I want to see a manager, and it's like, I want to see a manager. I want to see a man wearing a jersey. If you say, I want to see a man jerk off on a horse, Google's like, I'm not autofilling that for you, yeah. motherfucker. I'm getting the fuck out of here, you sick <laughs> yeah. prick. I, I do think that, Max, you're right. Like, it's, it is much harder. Just, it's just, as I, get, as I get older and I've thought about the idea of even having kids, like, it's just like a potentially much more scary endeavor. Honestly, don't know how you can go about, like, <laughs> parenting on the internet, um... I mean, I think you got you got to treat it like the internet is is a is a place. It is a layer of reality, and if you just it's like if your kid could teleport, would you let your kid just go outside and teleport to fucking anywhere? Because they're still a kid. It's not like they're they're suddenly like 
fucking action fighter night cr- night crawler or something like they can't just they don't get other <laughs> cool powers to go with it but you they're do, still have the brain of a child they're gonna like fucking teleport into some fucking opium den full of guys butt fucking each other with fucking vintage dildos that they found in a cave somewhere yeah, it's true. lemonparty.org but the, like the, there's the cheat all the same cheat codes are still there like when we were growing up i, like, I couldn't just be like i want to see boobs and then see boobs. But if I got like a, a, a Kmart catalog in the mail that had a bra page, the yeah. goddamn right I was jerking yeah. off to that shit. Yeah. So right now, I if know. you're a kid and you can't Google boobs because your mom ruined that shit for you, just look up bras. Right now, you, Google's we're, fucking we're dumb. They don't know what you're doing. exact opposite ends of the spectrum here, you know? I know what you're saying. Right. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just so, feel like the internet's become... The, it, so like, when we were in the internet, it was like... Yeah. It was like, you know, the, when maybe when Mos Eisley first got founded... And it was like, oh, it's an okay desert town. And now the internet no. is the <laughs> fucking cantina. Um, so. I'd say it's more like Coruscant. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Where there's too. flying cars, and inside each car, there's a different dude trying to come in his own mouth. <laughs> that, yeah, sure. Um, um, but anyway, there's something, there's something that bugs me on the internet that I think is Brian. I know you're gonna have something to say about this. Oh, but really? The, the fucking uh, the the comment. I think it's my my number one pet peeve that people write is. Am I the only one who? And then they yeah, fucking no, put their little opinion there, and it's like whenever I see that, I'm like, no, 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 you're not, because there are people who go out of their way to fucking buy mascot costumes and then to graph genitals to them so that they can go to fucking events and meet up with other people in different mascot costumes and fuck each other in the butts while wearing the stupid costumes. But am you I? Can, you can search furry Escalade and find a bunch of guys in fur suits dancing outside an Escalade, and that's a video from fucking 2006. That's not even new. But am I the only one who wants to see it? dolphin man fuck a kangaroo man at one of those conventions yeah there's nothing new under the sun as the old adage goes yeah i just but i mean so. that's the thing is is that there is and you hit the nail <laughs> on the head anthony and that there uh the scary thing is that there is a there's an echo chamber now you know so you're like i really want to drown my toy in my own semen in a jar and keep it on my radiator before it's like that was the thing you you had uh, you, you kept that in your shitty room, and that was your shameful, awful, nasty little thing. Mm-hmm. And now it's like you go on your phone. <laughs> quick, quick update on Rainbow Dash. It's up to her it's, ankles now. I'm going to exactly. keep beating it and fucking exactly. drown her that's, in jigs. That's the thing that bothers me a little bit because I feel like, I feel like uh, you human were- beings, you know, I'm a big believer in psychology and. I think human beings, you know, we have, there are things, it, like lots of garbage thoughts. You're a big believer in psychology. Like, yeah. Hey, so there are plenty of people Cruise. who don't, you'd be surprised how many people don't put as much stock in psychology, Ryan. But there, is, oh, really? oh. there is a people Shrek fan dumb. base. There's a, there's a so, fan base of people who like Shrek. Yeah, because if you so, did a Venn diagram of Shrek fans and fucking Smash Mouth fans, it would be a perfect circle. Mm-hmm. No, a perfect circle is a it much, would be a much different. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, obviously... Your bot, your brain constantly throws garbage thoughts at you. Come and back, I, and back. I feel like before Milk the old wolf. internet days, you would exactly you would let some of those just fucking get caught in the web of your brain filter. And now I feel like that happens way less, and people are encouraged to do it less. So I just encourage everyone to think before they act a little, just a tiny bit more. Because thinking back to our previous talk about uh, NPR, no, about oh. about uh, Love Line, is that when I used to listen to that, I think I was always really influenced by Doctor Drew. So I think that, you know, I loved that he, he could play the straight man like that and give people really sage advice, even if they had the weirdest questions. I was no always influenced by Dr. Talk. Dre. <laughs> I feel like he gave better advice. Side note, I want to <laughs> see the Toy Story film based on that dude's jar with the oh, horse Jesus in it. Christ. <laughs> that is the and to- it's just like that it's is- drowning and it's like, rob me. That was a, a real Toy Story. And all his there other was friends a, like, there we was gotta old... get Buckaroo out of the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> there was an old uh, Mad like, TV sketch with. It's uh, still connected to me, no matter how high out of the jar I go. Ah! <laughs> Do you guys remember the, the Mad TV sketch with Sex Toy Story? And Buzz Lightyear yeah. was just a vibrator, the batteries fall out of his ass, and he's like, "Oh, you need us to survive," or something. He's like, "Oh no, I'm powerless without you," or something. I, I vaguely remember that looking <laughs> way better than it had any right to. Right? Yeah. Yeah, me too. And then there was the Terminator Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. That, that's another thing that's kind of a weird. Like, do you remember back in the day when like? You had to wait for episodes of a show to come on. Yeah. Yeah, it still happens now if you watch regular television like a poor. Sure. Or a rich. Uh, Or a rich. Conversely, yeah, I think it's kind of the other way around there. Uh, But, like, I remember just there'd be bits from, like, Simpsons episodes I would never see. My friend would call me up and be like, that Rocco's Modern Life with the brave little poots is on. And I'm like, oh, shit, the little poots, you know, and it's the, you know. 
yeah, little poots. And I'd be like, oh, that's funny. I'm going to quote that for fucking seven months because I'm yeah. 11. And that is one of the great things of the internet is being able to catch up with that or being able to catch up with whole series that I never watched because I is that was good too though? young. I, th- I think so. Like, for, I'm, I find my life is enriched by the fact that I have now watched David Lynch's Twin Peaks. <laughs> so, you know, and it helped me appreciate that you're really awesome, David Lynch. You know Lynch what, Jay, impression, I feel like David way. Lynch would get really mad at you for saying you watched that on the internet. He got mad at people what ages he, ago for how watching. Would he, how would he say it to him? You can't watch a movie on a computer. You can't watch TV on a phone. <laughs> Why? It's too small. <laughs> the scre- it's, you, it's not made for screens that size. Yeah, but I, you I'm, need a big thing like a movie theater. I can't fit with it. filigreed edges of the of the banisters. <laughs> I can't, but David Lynch, I can't fit a movie theater in my pocket. I got you there, David. What are you going to say? They'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> um, to go back to our way earlier conversation about how we always talk about animals, I'd actually <clears throat> wanted to read this email. Right when Max was naming his dumb animals. And the milk snake, right? That's a real... That is a real animal. Yeah. What does it do? Um, it fucking hangs out in barns. All right. Yeah, it sucks on cow's teats all day. So so the, the fun thing about snakes... Here's a fucking snake fact for you. There's the milk snake and the coral snake. And they look like different off-brand uh, f- fucking scarves or socks or some shit. Like one of them is red, yeah. white, black, and the other one's black, white, red. So they're Final Fantasy palette swap enemies. One is Carl poisonous. Snake is deadly as fuck. They're it's not even Ryu. Like, they're just. It's like one of these snakes is not like the other. <clears throat> Figure it out, you know. And they're two different snakes. So this one will kill you. A milk snake lives in barns, and it's like I think it's slightly venomous, but not really that bad. The coral snake is like super fucking deadly, <laughs> but it lives in coral reefs. So what's the fucking problem? It's like be careful. If you've got a barn in a coral reef, this could be a problem, but otherwise, probably not. <laughs> awesome I have a question. Um, did, does anybody actually, like, did anybody ever tie a bunch of snakes together? <laughs> <They> just, <laughs> the answer, the the answer funniest... is probably yes, Brian. <laughs> I think I think it's the funniest thing to me. I think I've seen like a bunch of snakes like balled up together. Like, <laughs> well, no, they're always balled up, but they always slither out. But I think it's funny. Snakes are basically they're very ang- they're angry ass ropes. <laughs> so if you if you want to get back at a bunch of snakes, you just get a whole bunch of snakes, you tie them together, throw them in a burlap sack, throw them off a bridge. I think the, the coolest thing would have been if if eighties underdog movies had kept going the way they were, and yeah. they had like flash dance and over the top, and just it just kept getting more and more absurd to the point where they ran out of ideas for actual things that people did and had to start making. Up Sylvester movies. Stallone is snake knot. So it would be like real <laughs> steel, but it would be like, oh no, it's I want to be a snake handler, but there's such a huge competitive scene of snake handlers, and then this guy invents zip ties, and he's like, I invented zip ties. I've got a thing that's going to change the game. <laughs> Tie the snakes together. No one's going to undo the snakes. <laughs> Hydra uh, coming. I want to see. I want to see like a, a buddy movie where two snakes are stuck together by tiny handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we just robbed the bank. <laughs> snakes are fucking midnight, dumb. It's midnight it's, run with snakes. It's really stupid to me that we are we are afraid of fucking ropes with a mouth. That is so <laughs> dumb to me. That people live in a place where it's just like, I'm a snake. Okay, you can't even fucking. Right. Know. If you lived in Australia, you would Australia. You'd have such a different opinion to that. Where there are snakes that could drop you dead in six seconds. Yeah, you know sure. What I mean? Like, but that's bullshit though, because that's a cheat code. That's just poison. They poison their mouths. They can't do anything else. They have, they, they have venom. They it's can't print. It's not poison. They're Stop. not poisonous. Use the fucking word. Stop worst. it. Uh, actually. 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 I find, my, I find myself <laughs> wishing <laughs> that I would get bit by a rattlesnake. Snakes are terrifying, Brian. Why? Why? Because they bite you and you die. But they don't do anything else. That's literally the only trick they do. Whoa, except the, one, la- the, larger ones can, the larger ones can choke you. That's it. Larger okay. ones can eat a man. Yeah, and that's a, but that's still that's part of the biting. You know, a, a cool thing for like a PR person to do would it be if you like, let's say you were the the agent or something for like the guy from In Excess or like uh, David Carradine, and you come in and it's like, oh, this guy's oh, fucking choked himself jerking off, and then it's like, I got an idea. And you just get a boa constrictor and wrap it around there, and they come in like, oh no, he's. He clearly was trying to beat off on it to prove that he was the bigger, <laughs> the bigger he, snake. Man. He was trying to have a spitting cobra. You know, it's like and then the new story is like to scare away the new the story is like TMZ says David Carradine fucks boa constrictors. <laughs> and his, his agent's like, oh man, There's, and then it does a bam and a bam and a bam and it zooms on his head and his head gets stuck on the the fucking target in the middle. Anthony, what <laughs> yes. does, what's this email say? <laughs> Well, uh, the email was just a dumb thing about Why some stupidly... Why do people still email us? People, it was a dumb email about some stupidly named birds. And when Max was naming things like Milk Snake and you were like, you couldn't believe it existed. 
So they were just pointing out things, and they gave nice photos and YouTube videos of each one, too, including a bird called a dick sizzle. Um, <laughs> an oven bird. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how that's that called. That's called just... a, a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a bobo. A bobo link. A bobo link. Uh, bobo link. Is it a bush tit? <laughs> a woodcock. Animal or Star Wars character? A David and then, Fincher. And then, they had, and then they have a tufted tit mouse. Yeah, that's a real one. Too. My one of my favorite uh, fucking piece well, of shit. I, actually, I went through a, the the Peabody Museum in in uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, once with a sketchbook, and I wrote down all the stupid named animals. And I have this somewhere. Bear. My favorite. <laughs> Rhino. Kirk's dick, dick. Um, but one of my favorites was the, uh, the a whimsy thistle, the jot headed porgy, which is a fucking fish. <laughs> That's racist. It looks like the, the most angry fucking fish. It's just it. It looks like what somebody was bullying this fish. It's just like mm, something like that. I love those fish that both their eyes are on one side, <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> kill me, and all the other fish are like you fucking How idiot. It? The, the Picasso fish. But it How sucks because you have to be like in a. There, there's millions of fish around you constantly who are just like. I don't know, it's like when you see those Stick dudes that walk bag. weird. <laughs> and it's like, I know that sucks for you, but it sucks even more that you have to walk in, You have to walk weird in front of people that walk normal all the time. Yep. Sucks for those fish um, with two, two eyes on one side. So, <laughs> well, before we hit up a couple of Facebook questions, you know, obviously last week we barely got, you know, we had to record early and stuff and make sure we hit our normal recording time because it was Thanksgiving. And uh, I don't know, how was everyone's Thanksgiving? Was it good? Yeah, I didn't get bit by rattlesnakes. If that's what you're asking. It was all right. What was wrong, Scott? Oh, I mean, it was just, it was just all right. I Why? mean, there was nothing there was nothing special about it. Did you eat some turkey. You look so close to your family. Isn't that special? Uh, no, I mean, my family, my family, um, they get uh, they, they 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 like to fight. I feel like we're on the cusp of a musical number. <laughs> Scott, what's wrong? Ah, uh, uh, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> they like to fight. But come on, they live so close. My dad well... calls me. <laughs> That's what families do when they're they're around in large numbers, though. No, is it my, my... They inevitably Bet your fight. bottom dollar my dad's racist and calls me gay. <laughs> Thanksgiving with family, they hate me. Sorry. Yeah, no, that you <laughs> no, no i didn't have a fight with i ran my, with it i didn't have a fight with my my, my parents at all actually I, I hung out and, and uh started doing another pinball machine with my dad <laughs> my dad like to stop dropping all those pinball my dad tables now, in my garage can't be a, your dad what even when i can't be around my dad and i live farther away from him now he likes to find ways to argue with me digitally and i see it coming too and i'm always like i get a little bit of that like internet i shouldn't comment Thing like my dad will text me, "What do you think about Ferguson?" And I'll be like, "Oh, uh, I should not touch this one, but I gotta <laughs> tell my dad what I think." And it's gonna turn into a fucking text message thing with my dad. No, what you write? Uh, no, here's the perfect response to that. <clears throat> Ready? First response is, "What do you think?" And no. then he tells you, and you're like, "Me too." No, no, no. You leave. You you just say it's good, and then you and then he's like, "Well, what do you mean? It's good." You're either on the side of the protesters or the cops. I think you just say, "Oh hell!" <laughs> then he doesn't um, understand what. Here we go again. But a lot of people, a lot of people talk about that about Thanksgiving, where it's very difficult for them because there's always like this racist guy there, or there's this bigot or something like that. Like, just don't worry about that person. Like, don't talk to that person. Like, that's all. That's all that person wants is to once a year be like, "Oh, Obama!" And you're like, "Well, why? Why do you say that?" Well, because he he said he was gonna like everybody said they were gonna do, but then they didn't, and that's then they die, and that's life. Like, don't engage, don't talk to them, eat fucking good salty food. There was this cool ass drinking- rule. That they had a long time ago, where it was like the things you don't bring up in polite company yep. is like your fucking money, your, your money. religion, and your politics. Yep. I, I actually yep. all tell them about those, the cum skunk. All three of those things happened to me this weekend at my twenty fifth uh, elementary school reunion that I went to. You, what the what? hell, Scott? <laughs> that might be the dumbest thing you've ever said no, in your no, life. Just, is that a real thing? That was a real thing. It's. It, I think it's. It's different for us because we grew up in a in a small. Because town. you have an elementary school reunion. Wait, which how many of these? Because that exists for you. What? Which one did you go to? St. Francis. Oh, how many of these have you been to though? Uh, Twenty-five. This is the third. Okay. Yeah. So they do this every year. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it was. It, it, I think the thing is that uh, because we grew up, <laughs> I'm trying to rationalize this, but I really want to jump on the bandwagon and just name stupid shit that we did. It was like, hey, remember when you got so excited at that pool party? You ran through the plane glass window <laughs> and still jumped in the pool covered in Remember blood? when you farted and cried? <laughs> remember that time you were pledging allegiance and you started throwing up in your hands and you didn't want the teacher to see it? Hey, Joey Baskerville, remember when you said that all girls had three tits like in Total Recall? <laughs> Remember when you said Robocop was your dad? <laughs> hey, does your uncle still work for Nintendo? Remember that time your parents got divorced? <laughs> Jesus. Hey, guy who's not here, remember when you died from Lyme's disease? <laughs> hey, remember wow. that time... None of us could go in the woods Remember that time you had to carry the flag in Cub Scouts and you didn't put it in the flag holder? You actually put it down your pants and it crushed your dick and you had to go to the emergency room? Oh, wait, that was me? So, well, hold on. I just don't understand this because most people go to high school reunions because the people wow. in middle in elementary school go to middle school and then high school. Yeah. Usually, right? Well, so I grew up in a small town and we... we all kind Which of, would make this even more the case. Yes. We, all, we all kind of figured out, like, oh, shit, we've known each other since we were pretty much infants because our parents all put us in this baby social group together. And we went all through life and then just split up after eighth grade. Like, because every, everyone went to different high schools. They went to the the private high schools in Napa and Santa Rosa. And then I there were, like, four of us who went to the high school that Max and I went to. Okay. So it was it, it really got split up after high school. So we were all catching up on on old times but yeah it really was religion politics and uh because it was a catholic school and so there are some people who are super catholic who are still catholic and there are the other people who figured it out and are like wow you're still doing that you're st- whoa whoa Oh, and then there's okay. probably a lot more and then there's a lot of people. like super super right-wing people and are like whoa that's why you have four Teslas. Because <laughs> you have a lot of money. God damn it. Yeah. We're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong. Oh, no. We're doing it okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I like what we're doing. I think the people who go to elementary school reunions, except for you, are doing it wrong. If I I've, had never, four, I've never even heard of it. If I had four Teslas, I'd try to tie them together like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do with all those Teslas. Make a Tesla yep. coil Which out of those Tesla cars. Which makes sense, because if you're a white room, if you're a... <laughs> Right wing Republican, the last thing you would want is a car that didn't use any oil. But yeah, you got to say fuck you to everybody somehow. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. With his- I'd get a I'd get a Prius right, and I get it lifted with some off road tires on it. I get it painted primer black. And I get Judas Prius airbrushed on the side there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fuck it, screaming, screaming for vengeance, eagle on the on the hood. God damn it! Yeah, fuck all of you. God get those damn. gladiator blades on the wheels. Yeah. Can I ride in your car with you? That sounds really cool. <laughs> Does that sound great? That, that sounds, sounds awesome. really cool. I honestly, can, um, I can't wait till Priuses get all like picked up by like until they get, start getting like thugged out and like metal heads are driving like fucked. Yeah, up we got like four of them. more years before yep. that happens. About four more years and it'll happen. It's going to be great. This, I'm surprised this haven't been a hit for like for like drive-bys and for doing like crimes because when you're driving you can, at 15 miles an hour, it's, it's quiet silent. as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, silent drive-by, silent running, the silent killer, Anthony. I yes, went sir. to the, I we went did. to the Cat Cafe this weekend. Yeah, in I know. I'm a little upset that that opened, and uh, I don't know. I had always thought about how it would be really cool to open one of those, but obviously I never did it. So I guess I should just be happy. They're all they're all adoptive adoptable cats. Oh yeah. Right? Uh, apparently the okay. first weekend like they ran out of cats, so people were just going oh. there to get their shitty coffee. But it just so, became a cafe. So yeah. So they have it separated. <laughs> they have like <laughs> what? Hold on, Anthony. Why are you jealous over this? If you want to lazily look at your laptop near a cat, just fucking wake up. <laughs> <laughs> no, your not life because of that. Because I, <laughs> so first, because I thought it would be a cool charitable business to do. So first, well, I think it would be. A, yo, I didn't know you could adopt the cats. That's fucking gross. That yeah. makes it weird. Yeah. Well, here's the yeah. They're used that's cats. Not the, that's not the gross part. So the cats live in this super clean, nice, uh, huge play space for cats. Whereas the the cafe portion um, is disgusting. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just like coffee that's not very good but the worst part is that, like they have these treats they're like here it's an organically made pop tart or here's some crazy cookies that said oh, it's catter day in the shape of a cat <laughs> however uh-huh. um it's in an open air case instead of a closed case so there were just fl- fruit flies fucking on top of all the all the edibles and mm. i'm just like oh. oh okay well at least you're gonna pour me a coffee that uh i'll be able to watch you make from the start 
but oh. ugh, gross. And then you go in the you go in the cat thing, and there's like kids so excited to go pet cats. Like I'm gonna pet cats, but just like Anthony with all the, the Anthony knows be, with all the foster stuff. They're like, don't touch the animals. Let them come to you. So it's just kids getting frustrated. <laughs> it's just a room full of children. <laughs> it's like ah. I want to play with these cats so bad, but they're all sleeping. What can I do? And they're like running. The kids are running in circles and the cats will like pop up and be like, oh, you're fucking here. I'm not doing this shit right now. So, oh, so, the, whole point so of, the cats were being cats. The cats were being cats. So then, uh, Why don't they have dog cafes where the dog's like, hey, <laughs> I love you. Well, it's had a small hands. That's amazing. Because, be, because when two cats decide to have a spat, you can generally walk away and be like, oh, man, when two dogs have a fight... It puts people on edge in a way that you've never – like, it's it's crazy. People get primal. Like, they run. Some people run. Some people scream. Like, right. every time I've been at a dog adoption and two dogs fight for even one second, people scatter like a gunshot just went off. So like, the they people, can't handle dogs fighting. So the people that don't <laughs> understand – You do those at, like, in the parking lot outside of Petco. I think those people are a little bit unhinged to begin with. They probably think it's fucking what, 9-12. What I'm saying is – Anthony, Anthony, <laughs> Anthony brought up something, and I didn't even tell him this – there was almost a cat fight on my lap, which was the scariest thing when a cat is like rearing up its paws on your balls. Oh, and its and hair sticks it, up in its back. Its hair sticks up, and you can kind of, you're like kind of feel the claws are going to start coming out any second. So it's like, but the people who run the cafe are watching you like a hawk, so you don't mistreat their animals. So I can't fucking launch this cat into yep. the air off of me. That's about to fight, get into a fight on See, top of me. That seems like such a that seems It'll like that seems feet. like a cruel fucking <laughs> fine. A cruel, perfectly manicured Japanese product that's been filtered through the fucking political correctness of the East Bay. Oh, yes, oh, nailed it's it. It's just like, 100%. fuck this. Like, just go, go to Tokyo and fucking pet some poached owls, you know? Also, like, normally yeah. in a cat cafe, I don't think there's a separate cat area. It's just the whole cafe is the cat No, there area. is a separate cat There is a separate Just why fucking do the, cat th- the cafe thing? That's fucking, that's so stupid. It's because they, hey man, we gotta sell fucking fly cookies. So in Connecticut, there's this, there's this place I used to, go, used to go to called The Last Post, which is a giant cat shelter that some, some like insane woman who owned like a house out in the woods or whatever. Oh, was crazy like, cat lady ran it, you say? Well, she didn't run it. She died and she donated it to like oh. cat chair. And so they took this place. It's actually it's a it's a all different kinds of animal shelter now, but they have like these giant living rooms that are just catastrophe. The cats all live there, and it's these. They've got like meowsleums. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it's like they have a bunch of cats that just they just are in these fucking living rooms. They all kind of wander around. They've got like big bowls of food, and they've got like cat boxes behind some walls. So you don't have to look at them. But I mean, you know, it's it's no, it's like it's it's, it's like it's organized. Awesome. You know, <laughs> the funniest part. Oh, well, I wanted it's, to. It's actually really cute. But, I, it made me think of something. So at the cat cafe, I wanted to take a video and send it to Brian because it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. So um, <clears throat> in the corner, in this dark corner, is, was their bathroom. Where where the the litter boxes? I thought the whole place would be no built no out they of have dark their, corners no they only <laughs> kind of but they only have the the litter boxes in one room and the whole time we were there one cat used it and it walks up and it doesn't do the normal thing where a cat just walks in the litter box and drops a deuce this cat got as close its face as close as it could to the wall. And just just mad mug the wall. <laughs> so it's just staring at the wall with a millimeter just going. <laughs> it's just pooping with its whole face pressed up against it. I was like, this is the weirdest fucking thing I have ever seen in my life. I love it. I love every second of it. I want this on a loop on my tombstone of a cat just taking a shit with its face against the wall. <laughs> We might live to the day where we get uh, animated GIFs on. Oh, I'm so ready for that. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so ready Either for that. Either that. Max, you get the dog fucking the Hell other dog yeah. while he throws up on his back. Qcomp.gif. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to have a fucking loop of music playing. Has it's... anyone ever found the full length oh, video of that? Oh, fuck with hose of wet. No. Don't you Gabbana. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone's ever found that video. God, I would love to see like the high I, I use air quotes for high res but the whatever res it was shot at do you want to hear something really sad both what? of those dogs are definitely dead by <laughs> oh, now. of course been... Aww. but their spirits live on in the impregnated child of whatever that pit bull yep <laughs> got inside that other pit bull if he finished if that dog if finished he... oh he finished he, he finished, finished out of something he finished fucking hard <laughs> he got a meal uh, afterwards it's good to know Let's hit up like one or two uh, Facebook questions before right. we uh, kill it. Yeah. Okay. Actually, this is a good question. I'm, I'm curious about this, mostly for Max. 
Evan asks, what's your favorite piece of clothing you ever owned? <sighs> and I feel like you put a high value on some really cool shirts and stuff like that. So I'm curious Shit. for you. Uh, so I have this shirt that I never wear out. I don't know why this is the first thing to come to my mind. I why like do this, you own it? I like this. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. Well, I'll explain that to you. It's a shirt. I won it at a white elephant party in L.A. Um, that my uh, my ex landlord had. My landlady. I used to go to hang out with her and, and stuff. But there's so many things wrong with this already. It's gonna just get fucking, weirder. It sounds like you're <laughs> reading. It sounds like you're reading a Mad Libs. Do you yeah. Wanna, do you want, have you ever told? <laughs> I don't the story think I have told her? this story. It's she's like you, a friend, but we, I lived in her house, so she was my landlady at the time. And but we, you banged. We banged before I moved yes. into her house, so it was we. Weird, but <laughs> um, the shirt. She was Mrs. Fratelli. The sh- the shirt uh, Wait, is it just has a large picture of a handgun. Wait, what are you talking? You banged Mama Fratelli from the Goonies? No, she was just. But she was older than you. She was older than me. Yeah, she wasn't Mama Fratelli old. She was like, "Hey, get over here, Max, and suck this tit." <laughs> <laughs> kind of. She was. She was Boys, like, chase after him. She was thirty five, <laughs> and I was twenty three. Did she really look like Mama Fratelli? No. I'm really, I don't no. care about she her was age. Fucking, she was fucking Persian. She didn't look like Mama Fratelli. She was like an Asian Mama Fratelli? No. <laughs> I, I don't give a shit about her age. I'm really caught up on this Mama Fratelli reference. I don't know why. It, <laughs> she was short. If you guys have never seen The Goonies, you should watch that movie. She There's an old short. lady in that movie short. who looks like a 1980s cab driver or maybe like a... <laughs> <laughs> no, you do a Mama Fratelli, Scott. And she beats her sons constantly, and that's why they have some Italian scars on their faces. <laughs> and one of them has like a demented head, she and he only eats candy bars. Italian scars. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was, this... like it was a fucking number. <laughs> like, oh, I can count to Italian. <laughs> and they, they, they found pizza. this haunted mystery house that underneath has a series of I'm going to be an Italian heir when I grow up. To a pirate ship, and um, Max had sex with that one. <laughs> being guarded yes. by an octopus sure um you know if halfway through that movie fucking the <laughs> the lead kid banged the old lady for telly that would be a very different film now you're telling me that's what happened in your real life yeah i find that chunk, revolting chunk, chunk fucked her Go on. So, okay, here, let me get, let me give you the Cliff Notes version of this. When I went down to L.A., uh, this <laughs> if is you want the my... Cliff Notes version, go to IMDb and read the Goonies okay. plot. Would you <laughs> always have me talk about Just the Goonies? Go. Fucking hell. Um, one of my one of my step friends. Mouth. Apparently, I know that I have a Prince Purple Rain shirt and a Great Members Only jacket. See, I fucking if Mal know that. fucked Mama Fratelli, that'd be a film you turned off halfway through. You'd be like, I don't Max, understand. I thought they were please. looking for gold. That's not gold. That's you know not what? even if bronze. You wanna, if you want to, she, she actually this 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 lady worked in. That's uh, computer. <laughs> she works in uh, in in reality TV, and she actually worked on the two Corys. And she gave me. Oh, she, she gave, oh what the fuck? What? Kind of fuck, fuck? Six degrees of Kevin Bacon shit fuck, is this? Fuck the gun shirt. This is this is the article of clothing I want to say. I had a triple XL black sweatshirt that said the two Corys on it. That I. <laughs> you told us about this. Hold on. You're telling me this lady wasn't in the Goonies, but she worked with somebody who was in the Goonies. That's your get out of jail card for this thing. <laughs> you had sex with Mama for telling you, sick man. <laughs> Get over here, you puke. You clumsy poop. And wait, that's not even funny because that was you had sex with Mama Fratelli like 20 years after the Goonies was out. No, I, that's I don't Goonies know. 2 territory. Anyways, Scott's anyways, Ryan Mama, Scott territory. You was, basically, was this some kind of football play you had lined up? Like, go go long. Oh, Here's some fucking Mama Fratelli. Left, go for it. You left me hanging with that fucking David Lynch thing. I feel like David Lynch would have to think about movie theaters fitting in your pocket. <laughs> Max, uh, get over here. See how much she can fit inside this hole. I would have never have thought that this question would have taken us where it's Max, gone. Max, get over here. Let me see your one-eyed willy. The shirt has a, has a large gun on it. It says, uh, welcome to New York, duck motherfucker. And I walked out of this white elephant party with this shirt, a copy of Sex in the City, the movie on DVD, and like a promotional porn DVD. And I was just what like, What is well, wrong with you? Well, I fucked my landlady, so apparently some things... <laughs> You know that's Did actually you get any the free rent out of it. That's actually the gift bag you get when they drop you off after bang bust. <laughs> <laughs> I still have this shirt though. It's great. It's awesome. Oh, and an iPod Nano version, generation one, <laughs> a pink one. Wow, with four um, empty songs on it. It's just it's just love just shack ocean sounds. <laughs> love shack and Billy Ocean uh, music. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. Oh. That's a story for another day, though. We go down. We can go down. We go down to Cougar Canyon and talk about my adventures in Los Angeles. I do like at the end of the movie The Goonies where they bring them pizza. <laughs> I think it's an odd thing to do to carry around a pizza, hoping you find your lost children. 
and then you bring it right outside of a cave. No, that pizza has never been delivered outside of the cave again after that movie. <laughs> How long do you think that pizza was sitting out? Because that pizza shows up and it's not hot, and you know that Richard Donner didn't have like a pizza oven. Sp- yeah, I really at that point I think I don't really think you're upset about it. I would eat some old ass pizza that, that was sitting outside of a cave for six hours outside of that after I got out of that film. You know Chunk, what? Maybe Chunk can maybe smell ice cream through a walk-in freezer door. Like, clearly, he can fucking grape ice cream at that. Yeah, what the fuck? I love that. <laughs> oh, grape. What? Is that even a flavor? No. It's a flavor for ice pop. Yeah. But not ice cream. I feel like cream. in the 80s that could have been a thing, you know? No. Like haagen was starting out. They were kind of – they were getting weird with shit, you know? But yeah. You're sick. <laughs> the Goonies. You're well, sick, man. Thanks for taking us down that weird fucking Jerk path, alert. Scott and Brian. <laughs> We appreciate everyone who's listened. Remember, if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash comedy button. Find out why we got enough backing in there that NPR wanted to give us 20 seconds. Um, but, you know, but also you can get cool shit out of it. Extra episodes, hangouts, etc. Go read about it if you haven't already. Also, uh, we're also on Twitter. Also, uh, comedybutton.com today is fanfare friday oh shit we got a new shirt yeah. you, uh, a fanfare a fanfare hell fanfare hell fanfare and in celebration of fanfare friday everything in the store except for the star wars commentary is 15 percent off fuck yeah oh, also the fanfare shirt is full price I really Go like this that because out. this is like if if you sound f- like Mojo Jojo. I want to turn on the news in thirty years if I'm still here on this earth, and someone's like forty five people died in Fanfare Friday today, and somebody else is like, um, we've got a moment to kill, so let's do some history. Fanfare Friday was invented by a team called the Comedy Button a couple years ago. Like I want to start, I want to start a new holiday that people die from. That would be very funny. To it came out of the mind of one Max Scoville, and we now think that he actually worshipped this god in secret and slowly urged it onto the show just by making jokes about it and it's now grown into a bona fide religion and then there's a guy who goes off and does an op-ed piece he's like fan friday has been around for 35 years and some people say it was started by the comedy button but actually it's an instrument the jizz whalers used in star wars <laughs> <laughs> anyway. the jizz whalers is the full name of the hartford whalers hockey team which disbanded in the <laughs> early 2000s the 1975 hartford whaler team yes the who jizz impregnated whalers impregnated every woman in every port I rhode island Jennifer. actually wasn't was part of connecticut until it was birthed by delaware what did I say? I always thought that was a funny name for a hockey team, by the way, because if you had like, hey, it's the Pittsburgh Poachers, people would be like, this has to stop. <laughs> That's highly irresponsible. Yeah. Or like the Redskins. So anyway, it's Fanfare Friday. 15% <laughs> yep, And if you're hearing everything. this on Thursday, obviously don't go. It's, you're getting it a day early, you dummy. Yeah. So remember to check us out on Twitter. I'm at Chuff Money. Scott's Scott underscore Bromley. Ryan is at Rydog. Max is at Max Scoville. And Brian is at Agent Bizzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, go check out the things we do. Brian still does up at noon every Monday over at IGN. Uh, Ryan does the Geekbox. You can see it at geekbox.net. And then the rest of us do other things. I'm trying to get on Star Talk Radio. You guys should tweet at Star Talk Radio and tell them you want me to be on their dumb show. So World Star! What the fuck is that? <laughs> no one knows what it's that a, is. <laughs> it's a show about astrophysics. <laughs> really? Hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. You're he trying to get on, on people all the time. It, so I'm trying to okay. get on that. All right. Oh, wait, you can take your fucking Jedi Council religious bullshit onto that show and have him debunk that, too? Yeah, <laughs> swat you, you like a fly, little I feel boy. like I feel like you being like, yeah, help me get, get on Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast to, like, our listeners is, like, the, the kid in, in high school who's, like, very quiet and hangs out in the corner of the ag department going to, like, his farm animals and being like, come on, just, yeah. guys, together we can win the school elections. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> and there's just, like, a goose that he raised. Yeah, I would, wait, how, how is it at all like that? Because, um... Neil deGrasse Tyson is a um, scientist, and we have talked about the cum skunk and the milk snakes all episode. <laughs> well, anyways, if you Mama more Fratelli, show, wife. More sense. But with that, thank you for watching. Send in your letters to us. Join our Facebook group. It's facebook.com slash group slash the comedy button. And uh, with that, we're going to be out. We love you. Throw Mama Bye. from the train. Get over here, Max. You clumsy poop. Buy some things. <laughs>